Hello and welcome to another standard game video. Today we're taking a look at a white, red and green or Naya colored adventures deck. And one of the centerpieces of this deck is not an adventure creature, but rather Pianalar. This 2 mana 2-3 two, says Thopters we control have haste, and whenever we play a land from exile or cast a spell from exile, we get to make a 1-1 one, one flying Thopter token. So Pia synergizes very nicely with all our adventures, because if we play an adventure from exile, we'll also make a 1-1 one, one Thopter, so it works with our duelist, our questing druid, and even our virtue of loyalty. Then besides our adventures we have more ways to exile cards to be able to enable Pia and those include our experimental synthesizer which will exile the top card of our library that we can play until end of turn so better to play it if we have more mana available. Then we also have four copies of Arends Resolve which will exile the top two cards of our library and until the end of our next turn we may play those cards and then it looks similar but is actually quite a bit different. The Seek the Beast adventure on Questing Druid is an instant, exiles the top two cards of our library and until our next end step we may play those cards so this is much better to adventure during the opponent's turn especially early in the game so we get to untap and have the chance of playing those cards from exile if we do it in our turn then those cards will be gone by our next turn instead and then if we play Questing Druid, it's a 1-1 that picks up a plus one plus one counter whenever we cast a spell that's white, blue, black, or red. So it's perfect as the only green card in this Naya deck, as it will grow with each non-Questing Druid card that we play. Also still works with Seek the Beast, giving it a counter. And then a Virtue of Loyalty can be a 2-mana instant, making a 2-2 Knight token with Vigilance. And then if we cast the 5-mana Enchantment, at the beginning of our end step we get to put a plus one plus one counter on each creature we control, and untap those creatures as well. So this is especially nice if we're going wide with the softer tokens from Pia. I could have gone with more tokens by playing a card like Wedding Announcement, and that's certainly a legitimate approach, but instead I wanted to keep the curve of the deck as low as possible. Every card in this deck can potentially be cast for 2 or less mana, including the Witch Talker Frenzy, an instant that gets a 1 mana discount for each creature that attacked this turn, and then deals 5 damage to target creature, so it can be a 1 mana answer to an opposing shield as long as enough creatures are attacking, also applies the discount during the opponent's turn, so that can also be quite relevant. And by keeping the curve low, we're much more likely to be able to play all the cards we exile with a Rens Resolve, the Questing Druid Adventure, or even the Experimental Synthesizer, so that's why I prioritized keeping the curve low, also makes it more likely that we can play Pia, and then maybe play a land from exile, play a one drop from exile, make two Thopters, and that's how we can pull ahead. And then the rest of our deck includes four copies of Monastery Swiss Spear, a 1-2 with Haste and Prowess. We've got lots of non-creature spells, including all the adventures, to keep enabling it. Can also play defense quite well when facing other aggressive decks if need be. And then we've got Play with Fire to deal 2 damage at instant speed and Torch the Tower to potentially deal 3 if we sacrifice something to bargain. And that's a very nice combo with the Synthesizer. If we're not going to sack it for 3 mana to make a Samurai, instead we can sack it to Torch the Tower, scry one in the process and exile another card to potentially pull ahead. And finally, Heart Flame Duelist can be played as a 2-mana 3-1, saying instant and sorcery spells we control have lifelink, so that pairs well with Play with Fire, Torch the Tower, and its own 3-mana instant speed adventure, dealing 3 damage to any target, so it's also quite good in multiples, and that gives us a very nice tool against the red aggro decks, as we can now turn our burn spells into life gain as well. And then our mana base also has a few nice additions with a Restless Bivouac, which can turn into a 2-2 creature, and when it attacks gives us a plus one plus one counter on any creature we control. And then we've got a lot of dual lands, including some fast lands here with Copperline Gorge and Thicket, so we're off to a quick start. Now, for green mana, we don't really need it early, even though we could play Druid on 2, it's often better to use the Adventure first. So I'm fine with Rockfall Veil vale being an untapped green source starting turn 3. And then we do need some additional red-white lands, don't have a red-white fast land in standard, so we'll have to play Battlefield Forge, even if it costs us a bit of life. And then I do want this to be untapped early in the game, hopefully, so I'm not maxing out Sundown Pass, but still playing two of those. And then uh, the Crucible can also give us a bit more utility, potentially making some hasty 1-1 tokens, which also play well with our Virtue of Loyalty. And then a few basics in case we need to search those up can also come in handy. So no I Ganjo, which is also a possible inclusion. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play. Missing white mana for Pia. Can I keep... All my lands are also tapped, so this hand's kind of awkward. This is better. A one land can go... Yeah, it has to be Mountain if I want to play Swiss Spear into Pia, and then Pass is better than Mountain. Uh, 
Let's see what our opponent's up to. Turn one planes and initiates. Okay. So really hoping there's no ossification here from the opponents. Try and get my one free damage in. And then next turn we can hopefully make a few Thopters. Thalia's annoying. That answers Thalia. Although I wouldn't be able to make use of Synthesizer if I just kill Thalia and play it. Could Rens resolve for three mana. Also wouldn't be able to play a land from exile. But then next turn we can cheaply kill Thalia. And maybe still uh, make a few Thopters in the process. Seems fine. Torture Tower. Okay, so any attacks. Could send both. And then our opponent gets to train the Initiates. So probably only send Swiss Spear. And once again hope to dodge removal. Gonna be a peacekeeper that can mess up our sequencing somewhat so i may not be able to play a torture tower here if i also want to play copper line gorge put on names play with fire it's interesting could now also use a duelist to kill peacekeeper but not until we kill thalia so that's probably just a play now i guess i could also bargain sacking the thopter to kill peacekeeper and then leave thalia and play for another turn I think Thali is still more annoying, even though they could have another copy is uh, one potential concern. But we have answers. And the Thopters can keep attacking. I'll save Synthesizer so we can actually get value from it. As opposed to enabling Prowess, which was another option here just to get in for three. And then Duelist should be pretty effective too. Adlin is always scary. Can at least eat a 1-1. One, one. I'm not gonna give up Pia here to double block Peacekeeper. Okay, so step one might be Synthesizer. See what we exile. Another Duelist. Okay, so our opponent knows that's incoming. And can just kill Peacekeeper right now and still keep up play with fire. Which can maybe kill the Initiates. But that will also allow Pia to attack here if I want to. And I think an all-out attack is fine now. We're close to burning the opponent out. They know about play with fire. This is not going to work out for them. Do I go face or kill initiates? At this point going face might be better. But eh, let's just play it safe. Kill the creature. Bones at 9. Can play Duelist, make a Thopter, have another 3 damage lined up. Cathar finally gonna try and answer Pia. So options are plenty. But I'm kind of liking Slash Cathar, get back Pia. And then I can play Duelist to immediately make a Thopter. Yeah, Pia is definitely the engine that makes this deck tick. Boon falls to three. Another initiates. And finally, lay down arms to exile Pia. But uh, yeah, Boon is still dead. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play. Our hand seems fine. Turn 1, just play Tamped Veil, vale, so turn 2 I can adventure the druids and get the ball rolling. Turn 1 Mountain, facing red aggro, always scary. But we have some good removal in hand at least. And then Questing Druid can also 
grow out of burn range pretty quickly. Felden with a counter. Not a card I really want to double play with fire, so I'll wait to hopefully torture tower it. A land land. And a duelist. So that could also take care of Felden. Using the planes here. Or I can play Questing Druids and then at the very least kill Etching with a play with fire. Growing Questing Druid up to a 2-2. Yeah, it feels like if I don't play it Druid now, there may not be a great window for it. Although if I wait until I can Druid double Burn Spell, I can at least save it from an opposing play with fire. So maybe it is just Land Pass, and then plan to Heart Flame slash Felden, and then next turn I could go a Druid plus Duelist, or more likely Duelists gain a bunch of life. We'll see. Could also kill some three mana creature they run out here, such as Qui. Sure. I guess I don't have a fourth land yet, so play now might be just duelists play with fire etching right now, so we instantly gain two life. Kind of like that idea. And then Duelist trading for Felden could be alright. Would love to hit a fourth line drop, that will unlock a lot more sequences. Play with fire kills Duelist. And another Kumano. We're at 9. And another Questing Druid, so not the land we were hoping for. Could be Questing Druid, play Synthesizer, hope to find a land. Could also just play Duelist, keep up, play with fire. Don't have any bargain sacrifice fodder here. So playing Synthesizer now would set up a 3 damage torch next turn at least. And then I might as well grow Questing Druid in the process, or we can start with Synthesizer, miss out on the plus 1 counter but then I can cast any 2-drop I exile as well. But uh, yeah, we don't lack card advantage. So I think it's more important to try and hit my land drops while at least putting something in play, as opposed to going for Ren's Resolve. And a land, even though it's tapped, I'll still take it. All right, if we're not dead here, we've got a decent turn coming up. Put on just Channeling Crucible. Okay, that's not too bad. Happy to block that with a Questing Druid, given the chance. And a Kumano. So it feels like we've got the tools to survive this. Take 4 down to 4. Better get to untap with Duelist to gain life back. And another one, so definitely playing one for 2 mana. And then step 1 might be... Torch Felden, Sacking Synthesizer, hoping to find another land. And then I get to keep a play with fire to maybe answer Squee as well. Swiss Spear on top. Don't think I need that. Opponent gets to dig, finding adversaries not bad. Can get back, play with fire. And that's what they chose. So I could keep a play with fire to kill adversary before it picks up a plus one counter, as well as potentially kill Squee. I think that's more important than playing Synthesizer here, even though it grows Questing Druid. And at the very least I can kill an etching of Kumano. I guess never mind, our opponent does get a plus one counter here, so I won't be able to kill Adversary. But uh, yeah, still happy to keep up the removal spell. And then I can just block the Adversary with Questing Druid. I'm 
Wait for them to target duelists. And then we'll kill Etching in response. Okay. So we've got a 5-5 Questing Druid to block Adversary. We're at 9, and uh, we've got another Duelist to eventually stabilize. So now step 1 could be Rent Resolve, see what we hit. That'll grow Questing Druid. And then if I find an untap lane, I can keep up the Slash. And at the very least, I can still adventure the Druid in the opponent's turn. Find another Rent Resolve. I think we can wait on that. Play Bivouac and pass. There are still combinations of cards that kill me. Squee from hand plus Lightning Strike would be one of them. Opponent goes for it. Okay, so I got a block. And hope their last card isn't Lightning Strike. Probably should do this now. So this picks up an extra counter, but if they have a play with fire, they're probably not finishing off Questing Grid. Okay, so I don't have any burn spells, sadly, to combine with a Duelist. Can play Runs Resolve, look for a burn spell, and then I can still Duelist and gain life back, which might be the priority. All my burn spells at this point would be one mana, so I could also play Swiss Spear first, although I'm probably not attacking with it. And then if I find PI, I can still play Battlefield Forge to make a Thopter. Yeah, this seems like the play. Found a play with fire. Okay, that's a godsend. So, play Forge, play Duelist, play Swift Spear. And then still have play with fire available. And at this point we're probably just killing Squee, even though they can get it back. And then those questing druid attack. Yeah, we might have to turn the corner here. And then we don't play with fire until the opponent's turn. Although now we risk losing duelist, but again, most burn spells would probably kill me anyway. Opponent going for a charming scoundrel. Okay. Let's see what that decides to do. It's gonna discard and draw. That's acceptable. Discards Felden, which apparently wasn't good enough. And then before they get to attack, we want to take out Squee. Got a 2 3 Swiss Spear on defense, back up to 5. This one's close, and our opponent now has to keep a blocker back for Questing Druid. They could still get back Squee. Opponent attacks, but now they should be dead. Take four down to one, attack them with Questing Druid. They should have kept something back. Alright, close one. And our opponent explodes. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with what looks like a very nice hand. Swiss Spear, turn two. Can uh, adventure questing druid perhaps, or kick things off with Pia. Well, let's see what we're up against. Turn one, black, green, mid range, and a duress. Okay, at least can take my adventure creature. And then, yeah, I think I like questing druids. And then next turn, maybe immediately make a thopter with Pia. But I do want to adventure during the opponent's turn. So that uh, we can still play the cards next turn, as opposed to getting prowess and wasting all the cards. Dread Knight makes sense. Opponent just drawing with it instead of playing it as a creature. And 
land and torch. Okay, so play Pia, play land from exile, make a Thopter. And then I can actually torch my own creature here. Either PR or Swiss Spear would work without bargain, just to make another Thopter. Okay, we're on the board. And then we still have Questing Druid that we can start growing. Opponent does have an answer to Pia, but we got our value, and there's another one. I think I prefer Thopter over plus one counter. I'm still terrified of a potential uh, Gixis command at some point. Shieldred will also be difficult to beat. But for now, we're enacting our game plan nicely. I'll uh, put a stop on upkeep in case I want to scry before drawing. Another Virtue, put it back up to 11. And an Underdog. Yeah, going play with fire now seems reasonable. Could kill Underdog or could go face to scry. If I'm planning to kill Underdog, I might as well take my draw step first. I guess killing Underdog still makes more sense. Just to land the draw, sadly. Alright, let's go for it. Hope to dodge Gix's command. Opponent's at 4. Can probably beat most other cards now. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. Quick one here against Golgari midrange. Okay, we're on the play with a decent hand. Start with a Sundown Pass. Turn 2 might uh, adventure the Questing Druid. And then Pia can start making 1-1s one up against Mono White, it seems. Could also make a 2-2 two -two at instant speed, but it's not successfully ambushing anything. And an adversary. Okay. So ideally find some cheap removal. Pia, yeah. Pia Pia plus play with fire is going to be great. And take out Adversary while we can. And Thopter can attack. Next turn, play Questing Druids, plus maybe make a 2-2 two -two Knight. Okay, now Officer gets to attack, that's fine. Take three. Torja Tower was excellent. So... Got quite a few options available, but probably want to start with Questing Druid so we can start growing it. Can also sack a Thopter to Torch the Tower. That's pretty neat. And then Pia. And maybe one Thopter attack, leave one back on defense. And with double duelist in hand, I'm liking my chances. Adlin was one of the better plays, since that survives three damage. We'll just mean we'll have to double up. Now the token's also gonna get plus one plus zero. Oh. So that one's gonna go through. But I'll trade for the officer and take two. Seems acceptable. Now with the ward, it's pretty tricky to kill Adlin with two removal spells. So I'm probably going to have to start with Duelist killing Vanguard. And then now... Could attack with a couple different creatures. I think it's okay if we trade for Andlin and uh, lose a creature in the process. Question is whether the Thopter also wants to attack. I guess we'll uh, keep that one back on defense. Opponent takes it. And then I'll save my Torch to kill Andlin next turn. Steal Seraph? Sure. 
could kill it before it triggers, but I think Andalin's still the bigger concern. They'll give it flying, most likely. Goes for lifelink instead. Well, now I could kill Adlin by blocking and just finishing off Adlin with the damage. Or we can deny the life gain by jumping and killing Steel Seraph. Which is still going to be a bit of a nuisance. And then another questing druid looks good. Initiates next. Okay, so let's say we start with adventuring questing druids just right now to maybe make some more Thopters. And then at the very least I can still play Heart Flame Duelist, make a Thopter. Play with Fire Land. Okay, could just uh, play with Fire the Hopeful Initiate right now. All we can. And then I'll just hang back. Could have also attacked with a 2-2 two -two first. And then if they block with Adlin, we finish that off. Might have been even better. And the Thopters can attack. Opponent is a 9. So if Questing Druid attacks, they'll trump. They could have removal to Questing Druid, but then we still double block Adlin. So this seems like a fine middle ground. Adversary pump the team. So Adlin can go up to 5 power here. Not quite enough. And then next turn... Can just play some cards from exile to make more Thopters, finish them off with a uh, 3 damage. So I guess we'll just burn their face off right now after attacking for 2 in the air. Okay, had so much card advantage that it was difficult to see a lethal, but just playing two burn spells will do it. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. This hand is uh, pretty sketchy with only one land. Now... I do have a synthesizer, so I could play that turn two if I still missed my land drop, and then maybe play a land afterwards. Although we will be playing catch up for the whole game, basically. If I do find a second land, especially a white source, this hand's pretty excellent with Pia and double questing druid providing value and growing over time. I think I'll actually keep the fact that I also have a play with fire to maybe answer a one drop, and then synthesizer on the following turn isn't bad. Okay. Opponent on a red deck without a one mana creature. Play with Fire Ghost Face. So, not sure if I want to play Pia until we can actually make some Thopters right away. Felden is not the best one to deal damage to, but also don't want to take two repeatedly. Finds Squee and a land. Squee is going to be scary. Frenzy. So yeah, I have to hit my land drops, won't have white mana to play Pia and then immediately play land from exile to make a Thopter. So the question is whether I play Druids as a 1-1 or use the adventure in the hopes of finding some lands. And that's probably the play, even though Squee gets free reign. So not too happy about that. Okay, can play Thickets. So if our opponent's got a Lightning Strike for Pia, it's going to be pretty sad. But I don't think we're realistically going to make any Thopters with it. Since uh, this turn, if I play Pia, there's no card in Exile I can play. And next turn, when the land goes away, if I go Pia into Run's Resolve, I don't have any uh, lands left to play from Exile. And also wouldn't be able to cast any spells. So it's probably fine to play Pia. And then there's also a chance we can play a 1-mana Witch Talker Frenzy thanks to Squee giving them a lot of attackers, so that could answer Squee nicely. It's gonna be a Scoundrel. 
Squeer 3-3. Three, three. Phoenix check. And probably an all-out attack. Can block Scoundrel or a 1-1 one, one, so they have fewer creatures in graveyards to maybe get back Squee. So I can block. And then Frenzy. Get to untap with Pia, that's nice. And then I think the play is Questing Druid, which will make a Thopter keep up towards the tower, which we could also bargain sacking the Thopter. As opposed to taking a risk on uh, Ren's Resolve and potentially not hitting any lanes. Adversary can get back play with fire. Could kill it now before it gets a counter. So I don't have to deal with a 3-3. And our opponent's probably killing Questing Druid. I'll trade for Phoenix Chick. And land was nice. Okay, so we have options. Could adventure the Questing Druids and then still make a 2-2 two -two Knight. Probably want to do this in the opponent's turn. They can just pass a turn here. Could also just play the creature side of it. And then uh, by making a Knight we get to grow it at instant speed. Since we still have Rens Resolve and Synthesizer for card advantage, I probably don't need to go overboard. Even though playing this from the Exile Zone would give me a Thopter. And then for now I'll chill, but I do have to start turning the corner so they can't just draw a bunch of burn spells to win a game. Double Kumano. Okay. Make our Knight. And a bivouac and all right, our opponent concedes. So yeah, Pia definitely carried us, as well as a one mana Witch Talker Frenzy killing Squee. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play and our hand is good, not great. Of course, missing white mana. But uh, yeah, turn one Swiss Spear. I guess I might want to play Tapped Rockfall Veil so I can adventure Druid on turn two. So sequencing is a little awkward, but still have enough powerful cards that I'm willing to keep. So really hoping for some uh, mana with the uh, adventure here. But it's got an underdog. Alright, not the cards I was hoping for, but a Sundown Pass is nice. So I can play Pia, Torch, Underdog, make a Thopter. Or I can just go double Swiss Spear, Torch. That feels better to me. Exile Underdog in the process. And then Pia is going to be nice once we play Questing Druids to immediately make a Thopter. Also nice with a double Duelist. Trespasser we can slash. And land is nice. Okay, so we've got two reasonable options. One is Pia Druid make a Thopter, only attack with a 1-1. One -one. Kind of like the aggressive line here. Suppose I could have also attacked and then wait for them to block and then just slash face, play with fire face to enable prowess. Might have worked out even better. And don't need land. Okay, points at eight. And then hopefully we can finish them off with a few Thopter tokens. Liliana, not super effective, unless they make me discard, but that seems unlikely. So Pia into Questing Druid. And then now we can even answer Shieldred for just one mana. 
And our opponent explodes. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a fine hand. Can keep up play with fire, or we can play tapped sundown pass so I don't take damage when I eventually play Pia. Although we're probably going to wait to play Pia until turn 3 or 4. So in case we're up against Monorads, having to run play with fire could be nice. And then I think the plan is turn to rent resolve. Okay, nice. Get to play with fire here. And then still gonna resolve, unless we wanna just play Duelist. Not all that exciting. There's a chance we exile two expensive cards that we won't be able to play, but this is perfect. Can play Pia, and then play land, play play with fire, make two Thopters. And sure, we'll kill Felden in the process, even though it will replace itself. Head back for two. And our opponent finds play with fire slash Kumano. Those don't kill Pia. Could still lose my board to play with fire and, and, and the festivities. It's gonna be a swift spear. Going face. I'll take it. And play with fire goes upstairs. Okay. That's acceptable. So now we could adventure the duelist killing swift spear. Probably still better than going face. Could also wait until the opponent's turn at this point since they're unlikely to grow this twice in response. And then play my bivouac so that can start attacking. And then waiting has the advantage of potentially killing some three mana creature like Squee or Godric. It's gonna be a Raichu, perfect, so three damage will be enough. And then playing Duelist makes another Thopter. Could channel this for three mana. Yeah, that counts. And just go wide with tokens and one toughness creatures and the festivities would be pretty fitting here to its name. All the opponents at seven still have a bivouac that can help cross the finish line. Finally time to strangle Pia. And a play with fire on Duelist. Opponent's still dead to bivouac if they don't have anything else. And yep, that should do it. Well, they did get us all the way to five. But we got them down to zero. Or minus one, depending on how you look at it. Alright, so we got to see our Hanaya Adventures deck in action. And yeah, Pia definitely seems to be the centerpiece of this deck. Whenever we get to make a few Thopters, it feels like we're in the lead. When we're missing Pia, the deck can sometimes struggle to kind of catch up with what the opponent is doing. Especially if we're on the draw, since the deck is a little bit slow. Often want to cast your exile card draw effects as late as possible, so you have more mana to work with. So yeah, not the best deck in standard by any means. Can hold its own. I expect its win percentage to be close to 50%. So probably not the fastest deck to rank up on the land. Matter. Probably better off just playing mono red aggro at that point, even though at least this deck can sometimes outgrind other mid range decks as well, so it does have a few advantages. But mono red aggro remains a more budget friendly choice and is probably more straightforward to play than this deck as well. So, yeah, that's uh, my two cents. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.